This video is brought to you by an overheating boat. Is your boat losing power? Is it low on compression? Did it just recently overheat? Then stick around and watch this video because I might save you a lot of money. I just can't win. <laughs> so, my boat has no compression on two cylinders after overheating. This is a four cylinder 3.0 Mer Cruiser. I found the two middle cylinders only at 10 or 20 psi. I did a compression check on the whole engine. The front and back are above 100, which is spec. Now, upon some research, I discovered that when these motors overheat, they like blowing the head gasket in a certain spot. I am praying, praying that that is what happened. Little backstory of actually what happened. I took it out and the outdrive wasn't properly maintained. The impeller head went bad, which is the water pump down in the lower unit. The impeller went bad and the engine overheated really bad, really bad. Steam was coming out of it, everything. I thought it was cooked right there. Took it home, discovered that the impeller was bad, replaced said impeller. We took it out one more time before the season was done. Ran great, didn't overheat, was perfect. Winterized it, parked it for the winter. Fast forward to this year, we take it out, we're idling for a while, go to get up on plane, I look down at the gauge because it's running funny again. I look down at the gauge. Gauge is climbing. It's at like 160. So I shut it down and it was overheating. I do some checking on the lake. I'm not getting any water from the lower unit again. Get it home. What had happened was there was a little bit of leftover debris from the old impeller that I changed the year before that I missed my fault I missed it so it burned up the impeller fixed that got it running took it out just yesterday running like crap I did an old trick that you can do out on the lake and I started pulling spark plugs I pulled the front one engine died started to back up pulled the middle one engine didn't die pulled the one after that engine didn't die pulled the last one engine died that told me two dead cylinders so here we are I gotta pull the head off and check it over and see what I can find and I pray it's a gasket. A couple things to note. One, if you have a nice interior or you just care about your boat in general, I suggest laying down a tarp to keep your carpet nice. Maybe even cover up your seats or remove them if you want to. So what I've got done so far is I've removed all the hoses. I drained the manifold and the engine block. I've removed the alternator and just put it over here. Less wiring to have to try to figure out. Now I'm going to work on removing the valve cover, followed by the intake and exhaust manifold, which is one on this. Then the head comes off. I'm going to just keep this footage rolling from this point on and speed it up. this point on and when you loosen these rockers and get them out of the way and take your push rods out it's important to keep them in order you want to put them back on the way you took them off because they are a mated surface so they are wearing together is it a huge deal if you mess them up it, it really isn't the end of the world but you really should try to keep this push rod with this rocker arm and this rocker arm with this valve, etc. 
So uh, you can push them in cardboard if that works. Even draw yourself a little head out if you have to. I'm gonna just lay them out on this rag down here in the order I take them out. So the front of the engine, the front push rod will be here and then and so on and so forth to the rear push rod. And then the rocker arms, I might lay them out elsewhere. For now, I'm gonna leave them on the head though. I think I'm gonna make this episode a two-parter just to keep it short and to the point. We discovered the issue. It is a blown head gasket, a very bad head gasket I might add. I've got all the parts out, laid out. I'm gonna make a little list of all the parts I need so they're all here and I can put it all back together in one day and test it and verify the fix. A couple things to note that I probably won't be showing on video from this video to the next video showing the reassembly make sure you check the head check it over with a fine tooth comb make sure that there are no cracks also get a flat rod and a feeler gauge and check the block mating surface and the head mating surface for thickness with a feeler gauge you want no more than 0 0.008 to go in between the flat rod and the head or the flat rod and the block. Another thing to note that you wanna do, get a nice flat block of wood and some really high grit sanding paper and scuff both mating surfaces, the block and the head, just enough to get any impurities off of the block and the cylinder head and then go ahead and wipe both of them down with some acetone so that there are as little impurities and imperfections in both mating surfaces. Well, that wraps up this video. If you wanna see the reassembly of it and the torque specs and all that good stuff, I will be posting another video in a week or two from this video's post date. Thank you for watching. If this helped you, please drop a like. If you have any comments about how I tore it apart or you need any assistance, I'll try to answer any questions as quick as I can. And if you like my content, consider subscribing. Thank you for watching.